so now it's the bird strike on that one. And why don't you go ahead and roll for the bird with advantage? Okay. And it's going to go full defense, like I said, based on what it said. So, um, so my total is 27 on the attack. Okay, so 27 against a defense of 12 um, is 13 points. What's the bird's brawn? Three. That's 16 points. So it's going to take 13 points, which is way more than it needs for seven of those yeah. points to overwhelm its quickness. Basically, the bird is going to land on its face and tear out its eyes and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just keep going until the thing collapses. So the, it's basically this bird just arrows down, hits its face, probably knocks it into, you know, into the water. And there's this horrible thrashing of wings and, and legs, right? And the, and the bird basically rises up out of it, just completely covered in spider gore as the thing, you know, basically sinks into the, or nice. collapses into the water. So that's the end for that one. Bird goes here. Finally, we have the one uh, that is left and it's definitely you know on its last legs you're not i mean it's it's still a positive for brawn and quickness but it's definitely clearly i'm gonna go ahead and to go to go ahead at it i want to i want to turn and face it and and uh and try to to dispatch it before it can get to me that's okay, okay. well its plan actually is to try to escape oh to escape okay so um so in in that case Unless you want to spend a brawn to jump in front, it's all about a quickness roll for it. So I'm going to make its quickness roll. And you're rolling no, on ahead. brawn. I don't know if you want to do that, but mm, I guess I could pull it in and then it could hurt me. Yeah, why not? I, 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 I think a brawn, that... jump ahead and then start a clash. Correct? No, I think I think you're right. If, if if it's if its intent is to escape, I think that it would make more sense for my character to to uh, to. Um, gather his wits and, and okay. not you know, good enough it rolls before. really really well it rolls an 11 so with it's only got uh, and it's got quickness six left so it, it quick you know it easily you know basically vanishes you know into the trees cool right so um and so that's the end of that so what do you All see right. from this experience yeah, even reading the the rules was very instructive, and this um, played a lot like I expected it from the rules, which is uh, um, advantage matters a lot, and you're like you don't like like you say in the text, I don't have control over the advantage, but I'm always thinking about it and right. how I might get it, and what what how should I respond given who has it. Um, I like the fact that um so i run a, i run a weekly D, &D game and uh, like focus down the one that's the most hurt is like always the superior option essentially always but in this case you might want to try to draw in somebody less wounded to pull them to the back um right. so there's like a lot more full consideration in the initiative system and there's also as i showed i think a lot of uh tactical depth in the and commitment yeah. of like playing very in the beginning when I was outnumbered and then suddenly switching to be much more offensive right because I knew my armor protect me and then getting that really big strike off that turned the tide what they were really angling for was to do a little bit of damage to you that would bump you to the back and then they would have two strikes on you and if yeah. you given that you had already lost some brawn to spell casting and then you spent another one on the venom you really yeah. couldn't afford any real damage that was why I was playing kind of right no, I get that. But the point is, is yeah. that they were really angling for just a single point of damage. Then the venom would hit. Yeah. And then and the if you were at the back, then a doubled attack, both with advantage, would do the mm -hmm. job. It's actually, they, they tried really hard to make that happen. And luck worked against, your tactics and luck worked against them, you know, yeah. to, and my to head. prevent it. So your character would be proud of themselves, but would also say, man, they almost got me in the beginning. Yeah, because they did. No, yeah. right. I, despite the fact that I took no damage and I and I won the fight, I never felt like I was like winning that fight. Right. Entirely, like. Right. <laughs> That's actually a really good point, isn't it? Yeah. Um. So in that sense, for kinfolk, 
the the notion too that how things just went in that particular last clash or exchange is going to play a role in how you make your decisions for the next time. And those are yeah. going to fuel how you spend those points and stuff that matter in the in the characterizations, right? The gaining of the the hatreds and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. That's the idea. And one thing that I like to point out to people is if things go badly, I was going to remind you about the rules for an oath to see mm -hmm. if whether an Amborion or an Urbaja oath could apply. And yeah. then we would proceed with you gaining the benefit of the oath, but with the black points or the white points mounting up. Right. Right. And so oh. that is another, that's sort of the, equivalent in your game of, well, I made this decision or I decided to use that. Well, I guess I'm going to come out of this fight victorious, but I'm a lot more, you know, hate filled or scarred or, you know, you know, affected than I was. Or maybe you finish and you're like, man, I am filled with hope. That was a triumph. We're going to send our elf and call up to the sky in gratitude and zoom off to our next task because that rocked. Right. Right. So does, but do you see that you didn't make your decisions in order for that to happen? You made your decisions out of necessity in the moment. Yeah. So that's yeah, why I was definitely. trying to get you away from thinking of the big picture, right? Right. Let the big picture take care of itself based on those decisions of the moment. So does that help a little bit? It does. I, I, can I ask one question? I know that uh, yeah. we're at our hour, but... Um, I feel like I may be wrongheaded about this. Uh, one of the I really like the uh, the way advantage works in Circle of Hands. The reason that I've been wary about utilizing something like it in uh, Kinfolk is it feels that I should be fairly minarchistic as far as the ability of the um, the narrator to like dictate very consequential swings in the mechanics because I'm afraid that uh, given how um, how the game is oriented that the narrator having too much power in that respect will make them push too hard or even worse, pull back. Well, when, and, and, possibly. And, I mean, it, I would suggest that if you have enough concrete criteria for the advantage, mm -hmm. that the narrator, and this is my experience with, with Circle of Hands and also with Sorcerer Bonus Dice, the narrator mm -hmm. is as excited about the situation as you are. Right and is really, really invested in what just happened and how that plays into where that die goes. Right. So the whole sort of notion of, oh man, these guys are losing. I better give them the advantage so that we can turn this fight around or give him a harder time or, oh no, he's winning. Well, let's make sure they get the advantage so that he, you know, or, or I don't know, they're winning. So let's give him the advantage to give him a chance or any of that stuff. I've mm -hmm. never done that in Circle of Hands. I've never even felt it yeah. in playing Circle of Hands. And part of it is the concrete feel of the motions in the moment. Um, it may yeah. or may not apply to kinfolk. It's all about the the graining, the, the fineness of the grain of the options. Yeah. If the options are pretty broad grained, pretty large grained, then yes, mm -hmm. having the narrator throw their weight in on a particular side or not is very abstract. Yeah. Whereas if the, the grains are fairly fine, then the criteria for what to do with those and the span of the narrator's attention is short enough for that, for that not to be an issue. Right. So if you're going to have advantages, I suggest it be something given the kind of the grains that you've shown anyway in the current design. Yeah. I suggest that it be applied like by a role or something, <clears throat> you know, like you could even be so blunt as to say our side just has the advantage based on a role, whether we can get it or not, or maybe based on some ability or some criterion based on character player, you know, actions. Um, but if it is, if something happens in the fight, then whoever had the advantage, it switches. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. So that way you still have causal advantage, but you don't have the 
personal assessment of where and how it applies. Right. Well, that was very instructive. Yeah, I really like that game. Yeah, I have a lot of uh, fun with it. And um, I say, go ahead. Sense of, uh, What's that? I was going to say, I, I will say without any sense of, uh, of, of trying to, to flatter you that it's probably uh, one of my favorite first fights in a game for a long That's time. That's fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did one, I, I did a short session. I mean, playing with one person isn't a game of Circle of Hands. It's, it really is demo. Yeah. And I got yeah. a chance to do that at Spielenshus here in North Shopping a bit ago. And the player took, it was a hand-to-hand -hand fight in a forest with mm -hmm. like an angered, an angered dude, right? Yeah. And um, the guy didn't have his armor on. And the first clash, he took a bad hit and he, and we were using the unarmored rules, or sorry, the the un, the hand-to-hand the -hand rules. And yeah. he got his head just like slammed into the side of a tree. So he's dizzy and he's, you know, and the player's like, whoa, you know, what, what, what does that mean? And I said, if he gets in, you know, if you don't do something big, like right now, he's going to kill you. You know, it. your character is yeah. like, you've lost sight of him. Your head's ringing. You only think about it. This is not hit points. Yeah. Think about a real person. You just got somebody you know, got your head, the side of your, your head in his hand and just wheeled and slammed you the side other side of your head into a tree full strength. Yeah. What, you know, how are you doing? And the player's like, shit. And I said, what are your spells? And he looked and this guy's unnamed as it turned mm -hmm. out or no, sorry, or, or barely named, whatever. Um, and yeah. so uh, he, I said, he said, what are your spells? And he looked and he actually has uh, the blast spell. Nice. So he threw a blast on him and vaporizes him. Oh, nice. <laughs> Just vaporizes him. And the player's like, I did what? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So he goes in, finds out that the old woman is butchering kids and selling their organs, right? Uh, kills her. No. <laughs> strides out of there as the other son comes running up with an axe. And he steps out there like with magic smoking off him and covered with blood, right? And the yeah. player looked at me and he said, I am having a really good time. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it's and it's brutal. I mean, he was still was wounded, right? I mean, he still he could not, he was still unarmored, but he was ready. He was like, I am, I am ready to take, I'm going to fight this guy. I don't, even if I die, I'm taking him. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's got a certain something to it that I was really aiming at. So I'm really glad to hear you say that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I really like, as one final note, I really like that kind of what you were talking about um, in the text of, yes, of course, the mechanics give a feel of realism or not to a game, but it's really about how we narrate. Right. And I couldn't help but narrate things in a way that felt more like I'm about to die because... I might be about to die. <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, I have, you know, 75 hit points. It, 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 I'm, I'm just kind of playing at the fact that I'm in danger. But right then, I was really in danger. Right, right. No, I, I get that. I mean, I think that's actually the case for Pendragon, too. Yeah. Um, and uh, to a somewhat lesser extent in Shadow of Yesterday, although that can that system can go very badly for you, again, on a, you know, on a, the rolls turning the way they go and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, all of those games are actually quite deadly to the player character if you get into it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that all three games are also characterized by a very distinct decision to try to kill. Mm -hmm. It's not the default, right? Oh, a monster. Ooh, cool. Right. I read like, right. If I'm, if I'm going to make that decision, I need to meet it. So, yeah. All right. I'll talk to you later, Justin. Take care. Thank you.